<laughs> so, of course, I've been here for two days. Yesterday, I wasn't. Right. But one of the things that people haven't mentioned, on day one, in the morning, there were many comments about how you make a presentation, which, because they were brought up very quickly, people may have uh, missed paying a lot of attention to them, like how you dress. Many people, you go to make a presentation, you just pick the nearest shirt or the nearest to, you don't even think about it. So, how you dress. Um, commanding your audience, being in control of your audience, the way you position yourself, and so on and so forth. I think those are very important points that people should really keep in mind. Uh, in the afternoon on day one, there's the question of communication, how and what is an exercise of writing communication. And you remember a very interesting and eye-catching example was making Makere great again. <laughs> <laughs> what am I trying to say? That we put down words and don't think much about the unintended <coughs> meanings or consequences of what we put down. And so, it was a good reminder that yes, when you write messages, so what do I want to communicate? Does this really communicate what I want to say? And what are the unintended consequences? Um, the question of uh, CV being a legal document, extremely important. And I will give you one example. In one of these adverts we put out, whether for Nature or Thrive, and I don't quite remember where this example falls, whether Nature or Thrive, um, somebody sent in a CV from one of the universities that will remain, remain unnamed. And as we see this through, and very quickly, you know, getting this application, and it doesn't take five minutes to go through it, and look at the CV and the comment. Somebody says, has a master's in something I don't quite remember. But I said to myself, this master's, I've been long enough around here. I haven't come across this master's. <laughs> so, so said, Let's write to the individual to clarify. This was in the CV. And she wrote back and said, No, I didn't get that master's degree. By the way, this is somebody who had a PhD. She said, Oh, what happened? I actually registered for the course, but I didn't attend the course. So what, what I had to ask, you registered for the course, but I'm not aware that this course has ever been approved in this institution. Said, so, oh yes, when I wrote, there was the plan that <laughs> <laughs> So if I had wanted to be really nasty with that in the video, I mean, the issue should have gone fairly far, even with this institution, saying that these individuals misrepresenting uh, themselves or herself. Last point. Did you, did you get the job? Did you get the position? That fell off. That's it, yeah. That this was excluded. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. It's a legal document. You end with this step, you just ended all of your chances. Huh? So, one, one last point uh, regarding the general value of these. In Thrive, there are four pillars of the theory of change in Thrive. And one of those 
pillars is communicating <coughs> to the public and policy makers, in short, public engagement. In the letter I mentioned to you this morning, that we are asking to provide examples of our achievements. This is the letter. And it says you have to provide examples on each of those pillars. Communicating with the public, communicating with the communities, and so the public engagement. And we must show how what we've done um, in that area. So that this workshop is very important in addressing you know, this kind of issue. Thank you. Damali, could I ask you sort of to summarize the last three days, what you've learned <coughs> from the fellows? <laughs> So thank you. First of all, I want to thank you, especially those who have been here for the three days, because you have the whole picture of what has been said. Um, one of our intended um, intended outcome of this message, of these three days, was to create intrigue and self-reflection, which I believe we have been successful at doing. So as people are self-reflecting, looking at their CV, looking at the bias sketches, planning for the communications they are going to make, and also reflecting on the previous communications that have been made, whether they have made errors or not, whether the errors can be corrected or not, that is the kind of intrigue that we wanted to create. And I like Simon's intrigue that he's now going to <coughs> pass it on and train other people because that is, that is going to pass on the message to other people. So let's be the agents of change and train other people to communicate well. So it's really important. I just want to give you another example just to bring it home that a CV is very important and the accuracy of what you communicate is very important. We had a, a PhD defense that was scheduled recently, and usually we have a pre-defense meeting, and the opponent comes and examiners. The purpose of that meeting is to decide if there are reasons why the student should not defend. And guess what? There was a reason why the students the student should not defend. And that reason was um, one of the examiners, I think it was the opponent, downloaded the CV, it was online. And that particular student had written on the word PhD against their name. So the question was, is the student defending a PhD again? Oh, he already has a PhD. Why should he or she then defend a PhD? So there was commotion just because someone put the word PhD. That is a qualification which they allegedly have. So we need to take all these things seriously. But again, I want to thank you because, yes? Just to supplement what you have said. candidate came to see me the following day and he said, Professor, I've learned a lot of things during my PhD program. My greatest learning was yesterday. Well, I didn't attend the defense. I was engaged in something else. So I was hoping he was going to say, tell me about his PhD presentation. <coughs> but he said, I was called to meet this team. But long story short, an 
and I was quizzed about whether I already have a PhD. <coughs> <laughs> and this is the second one I'm preparing. Or something else. And I confidently answered, I don't have a PhD. And I was going to defend. Oh, this is the one <coughs> that I'm trying to defend. <coughs> and you don't know the details of what went on. And he said, it taught me I have to look carefully. I have to pay attention to what I put down. Because I think the fellow argued that uh, he had put PhD candidate, but the candidate was, when they showed him what was actually on the web, there was no PhD candidate, it was a PhD. He said, I sweated. <laughs> that was my, last, my worst time in the history since I've been here going through the PhD. And you can see a very small thing. Either, no, you actually told me that I updated the CV several times and on some versions. Clearly there was PhD. <coughs> but on this one, which was posted, it wasn't there. <laughs> Having actually has told me the story, I saw somebody really agonizing <laughs> 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 that went through a terrible experience. Mm -hmm. So just to add emphasis to what you're saying. That is a, a true story. <laughs> Very common. It can happen. I have on my email a query of someone who went for a job. This was a consultancy. They rarely ask for academic degrees on consultancies. They just see what you have done. And this was actually with the WHO. So this person wrote one, medical doctor, and I think a master's in something and was invited to do the work. But according to the interactions and the work that he was given, they don't think he was a medical doctor. <laughs> so that ended there. But they put out another call, and he came to take another consultant. So this time round, they sent the name to me and asked, this a medical doctor from Mukere University. So we couldn't see the name in the records. But I asked them, send a transcript so that we can get the actual number. Proof. So I was actually sitting with the person who was making that query. He called the doctor and said, OK, you bring your transcript. Or scan it and send it. But up to today, he has not sent it. <laughs> it's now over a month. He has not sent it. What does that mean? Okay. So we are happy to have the three days. You have certificates for these three days, but I believe we shall see the certificates at work in the next Nature or Thrive meetings. <laughs> So Harriet has your <laughs> certificates, but I believe Professor Sankam is waiting for his certificates. <laughs> when the time comes. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for active participation. Yes. for the doctors. Um, you see in the US, basic qualification, MD. Here, that's not the case. It's MBCHP. And MD on the books of this university, there is, call it the equivalent of a PhD, which is an MD. 
in, and that follows very different regulations. Also. Now, I've seen many times uh, cases where people are writing their CVs, and because they know what the Americans look at or think you have is MD. And so they are tempted to change the MDCHB to MD. Mm -hmm. So they write and sign Nelson Sauer Campbell MD. I tell people, if you keep writing that one day, you may get into real trouble with it. Because if they write back to the university to confirm that the person is doing it. This is what we have about this in the video confirm the qualifications. The university will say, <coughs> yes, well, we have Nelson Sawan come on the record. But he's not MD, he's MBC. And so you can get into real trouble with that. So I think don't take it lightly, just putting their MD, because when you go to the US meet, maybe some European countries you meet, you want it. Damarina Kanyako MD. It can put you into trouble. But it happens very many times. Yeah. And that will happen with every communication you give. If you go and say you want to make my greater, you can, you can easily get a press conference to ask what happened to my career. And you should be representing your institution. And the vice chancellor will have to listen to what you're saying. What happened to my career? Yeah. So if we can take one thing away from here, all communication makes an effect, and you're in charge of the effect of the communication. Actually, Prof, when, when, uh, when you actually asked that, uh, <laughs> I did look at 